Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here for uh, for another uh, Jollity session, where today's goal uh, will be you to go home with three with three fundamentals. I believe it will help the agility in your in your companies. So my path until today here. I have I have been working for 15 years in product-led companies. I have started as a software developer, as a tester, as a as an analyst for almost eight years, and then slowly I moved into product owner and product, and product manager roles, something I did for five years. Since last year, I am an agile coach at Out Systems, uh, helping, supporting uh, a group of 160 people to become more agile in the way they deliver product. Um, agile is not something new for me. My first encounter with agile was 11, 11 years ago, where uh, at T-Mobile, uh, Netherlands, I just found a group of people, and they were just standing up, answering two questions like, what I did yesterday, what I'm planning to do today, and for me, that was outbreaking. Uh, and since then, I have been you know, eager to get to know more about Agile, got training, not only on Agile-related uh, topics, but also in leadership, because I truly believe that we need to be leaders, right? If you want to be a, a change agent, uh, agent, a manager, uh, Agile coach, or the Scrum Master. Okay, now that you know me, I wanted to know you. So I just can you ask to go to this website, just grab your phone, doesn't require any kind of login, only three steps, slido.com, uh, you use this code 7318, and then just choose what is the closest uh, oc occupation of what you are doing to today. Something like this. So slido.com, and you use the code 7318, and in five seconds you're already picking what is the closest occupation for what are you doing today. Okay, five votes, wonderful. Some Scrum Masters, some pe product people, some managers, some coaches also. 13 votes, I think we are, yeah, it's already half. Slido.com, 7318, and just, you know, just pick one. Okay, 27, I think 60% of, of everyone's in the room. Thank you, everyone. Thirty. yes. And still counting, right? <laughs> okay, Agile. I don't know about you, but I struggle a lot to explain to my family, to my friends, but especially to to that, to that person that they have a misconception of what Agile is. Uh, nowadays, Agile is such a buzzword that you can find it everywhere. We are an Agile company. It means like we are fast. Uh, there is a, a job position I saw uh, some days ago, an Agile a quality tester. What does that mean? That works in Scrum? So there is Agile marketing. Again, what is this? So it's very, it's very easy to understand why so often there are a lot of companies and organizations that they simply fail their in, uh, Agile initiatives um, or, or transformations. I will just list some examples. A few days ago, I went to, uh, to one of my teams that they were doing their stand-up. Uh, and I just, after they finished the meeting, I just asked them, okay, so what is your sprint goal? Out of 10 people, only two have answered, our sprint goal is X. And then I asked, what is your confidence that you are going to achieve that sprint goal? And they didn't know. So they were simply following the daily stand-up as any recipe, in this case, the Scrum recipe, that we need to have a stand-up, but they were not following the purpose. That was to raise impediments for the sprint goal that they, that they have committed a few days back in the planning. So this happens very often. And also, again, about the certification. A lot of companies, they spend a lot of money uh, certifying all their people. And it's a, it, this is really a lot of money. Uh, some, and expecting that in a few weeks, by magic, they will become to be more agile. 
this doesn't happen like this. For you to really master Agile, you need, you need to have practice, you need to fail and to learn, you need to have some guidance from the managers, for instance, and if you want a faster, a faster uh, re, uh, results, you just get an Agile coach or a Scrum master. But it takes time. The, the certification only tells that someone was exposed to the knowledge, not it can master it. So for me, there is a very short uh, sentence that, that I like very much. Agile, it's an iterative learning approach. So ma many times um, organizations are more, they look at the Agile concerning how do I um, reduce the, the lead time to put my software at customer's hands. And that is important, although if they don't learn, sometimes they can just um, uh, release something that is pointless for the customer. They are not solving any problem. So not only it's important to, um, you know, to improve the DevOps operations in the company so we can uh, reduce our, our, our live time, but it's very important, never forget the learning part. Uh, and it's about customer satis satisfaction. So this should be the number one priority for all, for all the product teams, not stakeholders. They should know which are their customers, which are their personas, and uh, figure out how do they solve their problems. And for sure that if you have uh, happier customers, we will have happier stakeholders. But never first, first the stakeholders. Okay, what is out systems? Who knows what is out systems? Half, okay. This is not a sales pitch, okay? <laughs> I will just uh, talk a little bit about our systems for you to understand better the challenges that we are facing. Our systems, it's a low code platform that allows developers to build web and mobile applications. So you can, you can think as, it's like a visual studio, okay? I think most of you, I think may know what is visual studio, uh, but gives the ability for the developer to, to, to build their applications using C Sharp or C++. In out systems, we don't have v Visual Studio, we have the platform out systems, and we allow our developers to um, develop their own applications. The difference is we do it in a visual way. So imagine, you have this, this workflow here, so you just drag a component and it fetch the data. You just drag another component, you have all the business logic. You fetch another component and you can display what, whatever the developer wants on the screen. And the main advantage is our customers, they are reducing their lead time from months to, to weeks. And as you can uh, imagine, this is very complex and we, uh, we are working in an area where it's, it just started a few, few ways ago. Although we have 16 years, but the market it's only, uh, was only ready some years ago. So the unknown and the complexity is huge. So we are obliged to work with agility so we can learn fast. Not only delivering fast, but learning fast. For three, three years ago, everything was different at our systems of what is today. Our systems engineering, of course. We have a two years roadmap. Okay, so in, in January, we already knew what we will be delivering at the end of the, of the year with some sort of detail that didn't work. There was no such thing as a product owner or experience roles. So there was no one concerned with experience. There were super managers, so the ones that were taking all the big shots and tell the teams what they should be doing. And there was no such thing as the Jal way of doing products. And nowadays, our roadmaps are quarterly. So we know what the teams know, what they are going to build in the next quarter. And then they have other quarters where they have different confident levels, okay? They are just candidates to come after. Uh, now all the teams, they have a proxy for the product manager. They have a proxy for someone that is concerned not only with the experience of their product area, but also if, if the experience matches, is aligned with the overall experience of the product. Um, the managers, they are still super. Uh, and we introduce what we call out Scrum. So it's, um, it's, a, it's based mainly 95% in Dot Scrum. We just changed the name because 
uh, someone came to me, Pedro, we are not doing Scrum. We, we don't have a, a Scrum master. So to cut off all those, all those conversations, I just changed the name and yeah, because we are not doing Scrum, we are, we are doing out Scrum. And Scrum master role, uh, you can have it in many times in the most senior person in, in that team. Okay. And what else are, are we doing? And so, these are the three major problems related with agility that we are facing at this moment as, as I speak. The first one is that the teams don't measure success. So we are working on this. What does it mean? You will go to someone in the team and, and you ask, what is your confidence that you are uh, delivering the right, pro the, the right product, that you are solving a real problem for your customer? And this is not easy to answer for in many of our teams. And for that, our solution was to get a North Star. Who knows what is a North Star? Okay, five, seven. So the, the, the North Star, you can see it as a short object that is meaningful for the customer and measurable. So imagine, so the team doesn't know, doesn't go east, doesn't go south, they are going north. So their objective for the next three months is to re, re, reduce the adoption of their customer base from 200K to 300K. So that, this, this is their North Star. And with this means, all their work during those three months is to increase that metric. So they have a high level alignment um, to, to achieve a, a major outcome for the customer. Just some other examples, so like the increased adoption, it could be reduced the home page from three seconds to, to one second. So that is their major objective. All their problems, all their solutions will be um, focused to change that metric. And also increase the average records with per account. So there are a lot of, depending on the, on the product area, if it is a stack, a cloud, a feature team, so you can have a bunch of North Stars. And this is not easy. For teams that are not used to, to think and to, and to know what is, what is the most, what, what, what is the top value I can give to my customer in the next three months. Taking decisions is not easy, but this is the role that we want to, to, to have at the out systems. Can I have a quick question? Yeah. Thank you. Regarding the North Star, uh, you were telling that it should be a short objective for just for a couple of months, it, which means that after, uh, for instance, a quarter, we should uh, change our North Star? Uh, well, for, we have some teams that they are working in quarters. They, we have other teams that they are working in, in, in six months. If is feasible to achieve that outcome in three months, then it's achieved. It, uh, either it's achievable, so you can choose another one, or you just keep the same and just change the metric. Okay, because I, I was wondering what is the difference to the product vision, for instance. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Uh, and decide with evidence. So it's not only important to have a North Star, so we, we want to change that number, but how do they know that they are taking the right decisions? That is not based on the bias that they have, all the context, how do they, how do they know? So we want, we are also to in, introduce the ability, every feature they, they, that goes to the customer hands needs, needs to go with a learning point. Because this is a job, right? So we need to we need to learn. It's not just releasing a feature. We need to know if it is working, if the if if it solved the customer problem. We want to get some data so we can understand the usage to act later. Okay. So the metrics is something that is really important, but again, is very difficult also to have meaningful metrics that are actionable. It's not just a random number that you. You just sometimes you just capture a lot of data, but we don't do anything with it. Okay. So success metrics, usage metrics, as usage, as usage metrics, it's something like you can grab a lot of data pointers uh, for um, the experience of the user for a certain part of the of the app, and then you just understand which are, which are the patterns that are happening. So you can learn something about it and then just do some some experiments. And also insights from customers. 
again, we want to fight the bias of the developers that are working that part for three years. We, we want to fight that. Our main priority are the customers. So if we have valid insights from representative customers of our product area, that is also valid. Second problem we are solving is about don't aim to learn first, uh, fast. Some, some years ago, we had a project that took almost six months, I believe. Um, and after six months, with a team composed by seven, eight persons, um, that project was canceled because totally missed the target. So you could see how frustrating the team was you know, about all that effort that was discarded just because they release after that time and only learn, they only got the feedback uh, once they release the product. So their learning curve was very slow, was the re release cycle. And other cases was not, they were acting in the right problem, but it was not feasible. It's not only about acting on the right problem. We also need to comply with a certain time to market. You can have a good feature today, but if you launch it in one year, you, you, you can already, you, perhaps your competition is already, it's already uh, ahead of you, right? And for that, uh, we went to, again, spread these seeds of experiment, uh, experiment and learn fast. There are two powerful statements that every team should have on their walls. I'm not sure if this is the right problem, and I'm not sure if I'm doing, if I'm solving it in the right way. This is very powerful, because once this statement uh, is embedded in the team, means that they will question everything until they have some sort of confidence that they are you know, hitting the target, and not the other way around. That I'm sure that is right until the customer says no. Dual track agile, who heard about this? Two, three persons, okay. Dual track agile, it's an approach of software de uh, development that assumes that there are two tracks happening at the same time in, in one team. We have two tracks, discovery track and we have development track. So imagine that you have a team composed by um, a product exp um, experience owner, a product manager, and five de de developers. So seven persons, right? Some people are working on discovery activities, some people are working on development activities. And what is their difference? D who is working in discovery activities are focused in learning fast. And typically here, we have already, we can have already a good understanding about the problem and then just uh, come up a lot of ideas, right? We have hypotheses that we need to test with, with customers to see you, you can have five possible problems. So we have, a, this is the hypothesis that we need to, uh, to know if they are a real problem or not. So you can, so here you are, you are very focused uh, in doing the discovery and validation your assumptions. Uh, uh, and we have the development track. So once we have some sort of, of confidence of these hypotheses or of, of these ideas, uh, so those ideas just move down to the, the, to the development uh, track. And here in the development track, we learn by delivering product. And here on the discovery, we learn by doing mockups, by doing, by doing A-B tests on paper, by interviewing the customers. So here, we learn fast and, and cheap. Here, we learn more expensively because it's by product and takes more time because it depends on the release cycle of the team. I really like this picture. I think it tells better what I just did in three minutes. And for me, what comes out from this image are these circles, right? Any guess for what these circles means? Feedback loop. 
okay? Discovery tracks, we have activities where the feedback loop is, the feedback loop is much more fre uh, frequent and fast. So imagine, we can start with 10 possible ideas, ideas, hypotheses, problems, whatever, you are not sure, it's it ju it just ideas. And out of 10 ideas, you can already validate, you just discard some and some goes to the development track. So you have two different confidence uh, levels of backlog. You, you can have, well, there are teams that they have two backlogs, other teams that they, they, they only have one backlog, but uh, the idea here, you have a set of work in, doing discovery, and then once, once you have that sense, mm, is in, I think this is the direction, then you just re release the product, and then you learn by, by, by product. This is the best experiment you can do, not only by paper. It's actually when we deliver the, the product, uh, getting the, the customer feedback, uh, already experienced the product since they first lo uh, log in, only that, that is the final, the most expensive, but the final experiment. But this is not easy. It seems that yeah, it makes sense, but it's not easy to, to implement this. So some, some of the pitfalls that, um, yeah, we are doing discovery for two months, and after two months, we start to do the development. I would prefer to say discovery is part of the development. Everything is discovery. But in the discovery track, we are doing faster. In the development track, is slower and more expensive. But everything is discovery. Why? Because we have the assumptions and we are working on top of hypotheses. Uh, all the work moves from the discovery to development track. Well, if you are doing discovery right, out of 10 possible ideas, only three move down. So that is, that is, that is not the case. Uh, discovery team is different than the development team. Um, yeah, uh, although the, the product manager the proxy or, the, or the, the experience role can be more focused doing discovery, you can have deaf people also helping doing, doing, doing discovery. So there, there is no hard line saying these two are doing discovery, these, these two, these five are, are just developing a, a product. Although they have different responsibilities, of course. The, the main responsibility of, of the devs is to build a product with quality and, and that is feasible. That is their focus but they also can help doing discovery and especially they can also assist some, assist some interviews with customers so they can get raw insights from the customer. You can listen to the customer and start to, to understand, so this is the kind of person to whom I'm building a product. And uh, I think, yeah, we are facing some of, the, some of these last pitfall that dual track is not two teams. It's just one team. We have two tracks with different uh, learning velocities. And to ensure that we don't have a, a group that are, are, are working doing discovery that, and we have the development that they, are, they, have no, they have no idea of what is happening here. So we want to ensure that there are always two moments. First, if they are uh, running on Scrum in the planning session, um, everyone is there. Who is doing discovery activities, so I'm planning to, to answer these five questions with these 10, 10 customers. So this is what I'm planning to do in the next two weeks. And the development track, yes, these are the, the things I'm going to build, and I will demo this. And even if they don't talk for two weeks, they already have an idea of what is happening in the other side. And the review, mode, uh, review moment is also everyone. So let's, let's look back. What did I learn? What was the result of the demo? Which were the insights I got from the 10 interviews I got from the customers? And in this way, sprint by sprint, you ensure that the context flows within the team to avoid having two separated teams within the same team. Uh, and the third problem. Well, now, nowadays teams are overwhelmed. It's new processes, new type of teams. We have a lot of juniors uh, joining 
the company. So they are doing everything at the same time. They are learning how to develop in those systems also. So they are doing everything at the same, at same time. So they are overwhelmed. They are completely lost. So for us to help their growth, uh, we want to promote some easy alignment within the team and within the teams, uh, and also the teams with the, with the, with the managers, and uh, to guide their maturity journey. We want to help them to focus in the in the in the what is more more important for them to to grow to grow as a team. Uh, now I'm going to show five things. So recurrency, autonomous team, constraints, flows, and principles. Okay. The first one. I don't know if you know, but aligned people is the hardest and most consuming thing in our, our organizations. You are doing alignment all the time. Aligning on, the, is this the, the, the right problem? Is this, are, are we doing it uh, correctly? So let's align with another team. Let's align with, uh, with someone senior. Meetings, right? There are a lot of meetings. Syncs, so we can pursue alignment. Uh, demos, so you have an alignment with the expectations of your stakeholders. Uh, sale, sales calls, presentations within the team, with, to other teams, to CEO, to stakeholders, a lot, a, a lot of them, <laughs> random stuff, all those meetings without agenda, and there are a lot of them. Uh, and all the ceremonies that you can have, for instance, uh, in Scrum, and there are five. They will take more or less 10% of the capacity of the team in, in one week. And uh, not only meetings, but Slack, coffee talks, all these kind of questions, the time they take to answer the questions. Uh, why are we working on this? What's going to be our next release? Why, why this feature is taking so long? Some of these answers are not easy. Again, takes time. And for that, uh, we truly believe that we, if we have meetings with cadence, uh, it will bring some, some benefits. First one, if you have a meeting with very special stakeholders with a very busy agenda, if you have a recurrency like every month I have a sync, every three weeks I have a sprint, a sprint review and I want that, that, that and that stakeholder to be there because I need their feedback. So if you book uh, monthly meetings until the, uh, t until the rest of the year, so you have higher chances that, that those stakeholders will be available on those dates. So it helps to ensure that you, you have the right, uh, the people that you want on, on those meetings. It enforces decision making. If you are working in sprints, in iterations that take two weeks, for sure that you want to decide something so you can get feedback from the stakeholders. So there is a soft pressure to, to do something, to decide or at least to take options to the table so it can be discussed. Uh, and also maintain trust. Mo most of the things, like the questions I, I showed you, is because people, perhaps some teams or some managers or seniors, they because they still don't have all the trust in their team, so they do random questions, right? If you have a cadence, that means that, okay, I will have a, a sync in, in two days, I will not question, I will wait for two days to get the feedback from, from, from that person. And it's really easy, okay? It's, it's, it's really easy. And also it's, it's important to book the rooms. We have that problem also. <laughs> uh, so what kind of re recurring meetings we have? We have with managers, we call it steerings. Every month the team uh, join together with the manager and they say, okay, this is the situation of our roadmap. This is what we learned in last, since last steering, so since one month now. Uh, and also they, um, again, they need to decide, they need to be aligned for these meetings so they can share with them which are their risks. That can, they can be under capacity, that they can be running uh, out, out of target, uh, anything. So they expose, they share with the managers their risks, their, 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 uh, uh, their risks, 
and that the managers they can help or give guidance or just send or just just talk with this guy it can help you so this is what we call the steering and we do it every month which internal stakeholders as well this, this is the sprint the sprint uh, the sprint uh, review that ha that happens at the end of of every sprint um, and the customers i think any time is good to talk with customers right at any time so although there is no no cadence here but we have two two of this one this ones we learn in the coaching from Teresa Torres uh, and she well and she she has a lot of soft enforcement for the team to have a contact with customers like every week the team needs to have a call with a customer no matter the customer every week they need to talk to a customer and if you have for instance a customer that is very willing to take its time to talk with you you can book a monthly meeting with him so uh, in the beginning of the month you talk with uh, joan okay and you just talk yeah we just did this we are planning to to do that so you can have raw insights very fast feedback of what is happening just because you have the cadence Yeah. Who is the, who is uh, in charge of uh, taking care of that contact with the customers? Do you have a, a specific role? Uh, the customer talks directly with the team. What? What's the most of the con most of the of the contacts with end customers are done by product manager. Directly from the product yeah. manager to the customer is is responsibility. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And also some with the experience owners also. Okay, autonomous team, the, the famous triad. So our team, so they have a proxy for, pro, for product management that they ensure the product is available. We have a proxy for, for experience role that ensures that their, their product area, their product is desirable, it's usable. It goes to the expectations of the customers and we have the dev team composed by, in our case, system owners, quality developers, that ensure the product is feasible and uh, is re uh, re 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 released with quality. Because why are we saying that is autonomous team? Because they are mandated to take decisions. They are responsible for all the all the all the all the all the way until they find the problems. So they have their mission, right? Which are the problems? How are they going to solve? And they will just ship the uh, ship uh, that uh, that. So they are they have all the skill set they need to 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 do this. Uh, and with this, yeah, we just try to avoid at all costs uh, endovers between teams. So we have a group of of seven uh, of seven person, and they are responsible for everything. But autonomy without constraint is a chaos. Some of, some of the teams, they are not ready to take this responsibility. Either because you have a lot of junior people there or either just because it is, it is difficult. So if you have some constraints, again, you help the teams to focus their growth. You can think of constraints like taxes that everyone needs to pay. Although they are autonomous, they, are, they have some limitations in their autonomy. So they have some constraints. Um, and why some constraints are important. Uh, in our um, at, at, uh, at all systems, we have what we call pro pro productivity team. It's responsible to ease the process to delivering product. In order for this to happen, all the teams, they, need, they have a constraint uh, to where uh, to each um, uh, code base they should commit the code uh, what is the release cycle so there are some procedures that every team needs to do so this is a constraint this is a rule that is not optional uh, and also guide them to achieve to to achieve what matters so if you have a, a self-formed team uh, with three months and as you know it takes time to form a team is not only to hire the best it takes time to to form a, a, a team uh, so they so they can first focus in improve 
their processes to achieve those constraints. And then if they have time, they will just, you know, just um, uh, improve other parts that they feel are needed. As, as constraints we, we have, is not optional, not to have a, a, the, a session at the end of every sprint. For instance, it's not optional not to handle a high priority bug for more than one month. So this is a rule. Uh, to have a quarter North Star is a constraint, but uh, it, it's, it's giving a fight, this one. And to, uh, and to every month, at least, to, to, to go something to a customer. Uh, and of course, ensuring that we have a learning point. Because Agile is, means to learn fast, learn iteratively. Um, we also introduced what we call the product development framework. So here you, you, you can see discovery track, here you can see delivery tracks, and this is especially important for, for the people that they are doing discovery activities for the first time. So we just capture what we think are the activities that, that can happen in the discovery flow, and this is just optional, so they just look at this. So instead of they go to Google to understand how do I do a, a usability test, for instance, we have this, so they, they, they find their activity, and for each one of these activities, you can find a card. And in this card, you have what is the purpose of, the, of this activity, you have some, some, of, some, of the, some of the information you need, and always with link to a conference page, to another, to, to a, another page, or just to, to get some meaningful examples of, the, of these activities and the principles. Everything I said until now follows our, our principles. And we, and we have five major principles here. Do the right things. Again, we need to accept we don't know and we need to question and only a feedback from the customer, it's, it, it, it will tell us this is the right thing. Uh, deliver the value in small, in small increments, move people to work so we can have autonomous teams and avoid uh, endovers between the teams. Uh, measure outcomes. The first sentence is very strong. Production is just the first stop out of the gate. Because then we need to capture the feedback and act based on that, on that feedback. And we want to crunch the, the lead time. So the teams that they, they have their release cycle in months, we want to push them to release in weeks. The ones that are releasing in weeks, we want to push to uh, release in days. So this is also a principle. And a principle means for us, when a decision is taken, we need to take in, into account these principles. Okay, so a quick recap. Get the North Star. So, and looking at this, so you, 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 have, you have the team, you already know what is your, your North Star, that is to, ha to make uh, the customer happy, and then you just, it's not a straight line, because it's complex, because we don't know, and we need to take uh, those, those um, uh, informed decisions with metrics, with evidence, a, da a data pointer, or conversation with customers. The second one, experiment and learn fast. We have a team that they already know what is their, their North Star. They already know which are their customers. If they don't know which are their customers, they need to, to understand which are the customers for that North Star. And then we just work with dual track agile with discovery activities. We want to get fast feedback. And promote easy, easy alignment. So we, we have a team, auto, auto, autonomous teams. We give them some structure with our own product development framework. We give them constraints so they can, so these are the taxes. These are the things they need to focus to grow as a team first, and then they can grow other points. And also the recurrency of the, of the alignments so we can save time within the organization. And that's it. Questions? Oh, I already got two questions there. 
Now is also the time. Sometimes when you cannot have measurements from the customer. We go back to the bias, you know, to the gut feeling and so on. Yes. Yes, but but if you focus the team on the on the on the learning point, for instance, in the uh, refine session when they are breaking down all all their work, they are doing the 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 estimates. At that point, they already can figure out how am I going to measure this, and if that will take effort, perhaps the estimate can go from five to from five to eight, and that and that's okay because they will learn something with it. But it's not easy. So my second question is about uh, background. Uh, when you have a scrum master that does not, uh, that does not uh, develop uh, yeah. for experience, or for instance, you have a fractional analyst that is not at all about um, IT or what, when you have such kind of teams, yeah. what, how do you learn? How do you, what do you, what do you recommend to do? Or when there is no, the when there is no scrum master? Well, about the background. Yeah, people are people, and managing people, the way they talk and information flows is really is really challenging. <coughs> yes, but uh, I cannot find a secret recipe for that. I'm curious about uh, what makes dual track uh, particularly adequate for for odd systems, like co when compared with single track or other yeah. methodologies. Because the product is very complex, uh, and because most of the times we are not sure of the things we are doing, so we need to have fast feed feedback loops. Before we have discovery activities, our feedback loops in some teams was every six months. This is not okay. So you were only doing the, the lower part of the yes. dual track? Yes. Sometimes it will happen randomly. Some people, they, they, were already, they were already doing some discovery activities like mock-ups, usability tests. Some, in some cases, that already happened, but it was not something systematic for all, for all the teams. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, so how did you guys get? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you were looking at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight. Just short Yeah. Um, just a short question. Uh, you mentioned uh, the uh, dual track agile yeah. approach. Um, is it a way or is it approach to bring in the younger people, or the unexperienced people, the first in the uh, uh, discovery? track and then bring them in the development track or do you have some experience with doing that? The so younger in people? Order to get them more mature. So is it, a, is it a way to let them start first in the discovery track? Well, I, I can say that usually our product roles and experience roles, they are more, they are more senior than some, than, than some devs. Okay. So you can find more mature people doing discovery activities, but that is not mandatory. Because if you need to do a quick ex experiment using product, mm -hmm. just a landing page, for instance, you can have a, a page on, on the website only with a button. On, you can have some random stuff and, and you can do ex ex experiment. If you have 600 people hitting that button, means that there is interest in that topic. And perhaps for you to do this, this landing page, you need a, a, a developer, just a case. Thanks so much. Good yeah. uh, you need, you need um, so how do you guys get feedback from your end customer? You mentioned some interviews, but yeah. I, mean, I don't know. That's not the only channel, is it? Uh, also, some tools that you guys are using. Yeah, again, the product is very complex. We have three main customers. It's not, all, not only one. We have the people that buy the, the platform, usually C-level people. We have the software developers. This is an, another person that we need to have, we need to give a good experience developing in that system. So we, we have this, this person. And we also have uh, the end user for the applications developed in, in our systems. So if our end 
if our persona is the is the developer, we have some we have some meetups with developers communities. We have people that are focused in trying to capture. We have M MVP programs, which are special special um, special developers that they they work as evangelists for our system. So this is all all these are sort of channels to flow the feedback, and from the end customers that. It is even more challenging for the for the customer that is using applications created by our customers. Possibly on-site feedback. Most likely, usually tests. Sometimes we just go to our to our to our customers, and there is someone from experience that is running conversations with with the, with the, with the ten persons. Not if it's easy to develop in our systems, but is this pretty for you? Do you like the experience of this app? Just to grab that feedback. I think perhaps is the last one. Yeah, one last <laughs> one before we go to pizza. <clears throat> you said you had no scrum masters in your teams. Yeah. So who's the servant leader? Who coaches the team? Who is the mentor? Who removes impediments, etc. Cetera, et cetera? Yeah, we have what we call the team captain. It's like a kind of team leader, but not, not only. The team captain role is responsible for the growth of the team. And also to raise, to raise impediments, to, f to facilitate things to, to happen. And usually it's a, it's, a, it's a senior person and is the closest role we have from a Scrum Master. And all the teams, they are provided with an agile coach also. So we also help on that. Not only on Scrum or Kanban related topics, but any agility, as you saw, problem. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much, Pedro. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for the discussion. Let's give a round of applause to Pedro. Thank you.